In this episode, we'll look at sounder skills. I'll show you how sounders work. We'll discuss chirp technology, sounder settings and functions, uh, how to interpret your sounder, um, how structure scan works, down scan, down imaging, side scan and side imaging. We will look at the best GPS setups and the main reasons why people don't see fish on their sounder. I'll run through how to back up and save waypoints and data as well. With 2D sonar in your sounder, uh, sounders send a signal down to the bottom of the waterway being fished and they listen out for a return echo. The transducer on your boat will send down a number of cone shaped signals below the boat before the transducer again receives a return signal. Once a return signal is received, the transducer will then convert that signal to an image that you will see on the screen. The sonar beams shoot down at an angle of 33 degrees either side of the transducer. The very right hand side of your sounder is the present data, always directly below your boat. The further left the screen moves, the older the data is, making up the history. Fish arches are created by a weaker sonar signal, then a stronger signal, followed by another weaker signal. These fish arches are only created through the movement of the boat or fish. Smaller fish will show up as blue arches and the bigger models will have a thicker band. Compressed high intensity radar pulse or chirp. Chirp technology sends multiple frequencies or signals down to the bottom as opposed to the traditional single frequency technology used in regular broadband sonar. This equates to improved image, clearer screen and better target separation. The continuous frequency sweep provides the system with more information which is individually processed upon return. Sounder settings and functions. Gain sets the sensitivity of the fish finder. This is somewhat like the sounder's hearing aid. If this is set too high, the screen will become overcluttered and difficult to read. If the sensitivity is too low, it will be difficult to mark fish. So set this on auto. Frequency, low chirp equals 50 kilohertz, medium chirp equals 83 kilohertz, and high chirp equals 200 kilohertz. High frequency settings are preferred for shallow water, whereas low frequency uh, settings are better for deeper water. When trolling, use medium frequency chirp or palette one. Uh, this is the best default color palette, and this or number two are the preferred choices. Palette one has yellow as the strongest signal strength, and blue the weakest, and the background white. Red will show up when there is a soft bottom. With color palette two, Green is the strongest signal, with brown as the only bottom colour, which allows differentiation between the bottom and fish. It's a great option when bottom fishing. Scroll speed. When you speed the scroll screen up, the fish will look more elongated. Slower scroll speeds will see the fish arches become shorter. Turn the surface clarity off. Set the colour line to auto. Set the boat speed to knots. That's best for trolling depth to meters and water temperatures to degrees Celsius, both standard Australian measurements. Turn the amplitude bar off, it doesn't do much and isn't really required. Noise rejection can be turned on or off depending on the type of fishing. I turn it on when trolling and off on most other occasions. Ping speed should be set to maximum capacity as this will control the amount of signals coming from the unit the temperature graph is at the top of the screen. Keep an eye on this for water temperature changes. Turn fish ID off, as this is an inconsistent and unpredictable method of determining whether or not the sound that is picked up is a fish or structure. Essentially, the sounder is making an estimate about whether the mark is a fish or not, and it's often inaccurate. Rather learn to understand exactly what a fish arch looks like. Run auto depth range, as this will automatically adjust to the depth that you are fishing at. Uh, to do this on a low rance Elite TI, go to Menu, Settings, Sonar, Run Auto Depth Range. Press down on the pages and power key simultaneously to take a screenshot. When you're catching fish, have a close look at the sounder to see what the fish marks look like. When fish are caught, save the waypoint as fish type 
and date for future reference. Down scan and imaging will use the same frequencies as side scan and side imaging, but the cone shaped direction of the signal is below the boat only. It is much narrower than 2D, but is also much wider. This will mean that the image that you see on your screen is that which is below your boat. Fish and structure are easy to interpret as the target separation is excellent. Down scan should be used side by side with a 2D sonar to assist with target separation. It will help to teach you what you are seeing on your 2D sounder. It also allows fish to be identified more easily in structure such as weeds as the traditional 2D sonar will show up weeds similar to a fish arch making it difficult to distinguish fish without the aid of down scan. It does run better at lower speeds. A metre of depth will equate to a metre of width. To tell the difference between a hard and soft bottom on down scan, it must be remembered that a hard bottom will return more sound reflected back to the transducer. Hence a hard bottom will provide an image with a deeper white compared to a lighter shade of white for a softer bottom. Side imaging and scanning differs to down scan and imaging as two thin beams are sent down parallel to either side of the boat at an angle of 86 degrees. With side scan and imaging, you will see a picture both directly below the boat and either side of the boat. It allows for the best level of target separation, but the boat must be moving slowly in order to obtain a true and accurate picture of fish and structure. Optimum speed is between three and five knots or six and nine kilometers per hour. The high frequency setting of 800 kilohertz will show up structure and fish in more detail. The 455 kilohertz frequency will show fish and structure in less detail, but will provide a wider angle or view. To tell the difference between a hard and soft bottom on side scan, it must be remembered that a hard bottom will return more sound reflected back to the transducer. Hence a hard bottom will provide an image with a deeper white compared with a lighter shade of white for a softer bottom. Straight vertical edges will mean a flat bottom. The top of the screen is the most recent image directly below the boat. The bottom of the screen is history. Water depth is indicated by the width of the two vertical lines either side of the main centre line. Shallow water will show as narrow lines. Deeper water will be indicated by wider lines. The black centre section is simply the down scan cone or area directly underneath the boat. The side scan images are either side of the boat. Settings, palette 9 is a good all round colour as blue is easy to read. Run structure scan in auto, set the contrast to auto. There are two frequency choices, 800 kHz or 455 kHz. Select the option that provides the highest quality image. Check your sounder for the fish reveal feature. Fish will show up as a bright white return, similar to a rice bubble. If the fish is sitting up off the bottom, you will see a dark shadow. Decrease range to make objects bigger. Structure scan 3D will show a 3D representation of the bottom. It will show the transducer's cone angle and it will be easy to identify fish uh, as orange markings. To set up GPS, the look ahead function will allow the arrow or the boat's position to be at the bottom of the page. This will allow you to see what is ahead of you. To do this, go to menu, chart options, heading up, look ahead. A heading extension will create a visible predicted line of the boat's direction on the screen. This is particularly useful when drift fishing over marks as it will help you to determine the direction of your drift. This function will allow you to quickly drive the boat back to your marks. To do this, go to Settings, Chart, Heading Extension. It's useful to back up your waypoints every so often in case of an emergency. If you want to do this, you'll need to go to Pages, Files, Waypoints, Routes, select card number one and hit OK. The main reasons why people don't see fish on their sounder. Number one is boat speed. The faster the boat is going, the smaller the images will look like on the sounder. The faster the boat is going, the smaller the fish, the double the speed halves the size of the fish. 
Smaller fish targets are even harder to see at speed, especially in deeper water. Fish higher in the water column can show up as smaller arches due to the fact that the 2D cone or the beam gets wider as it goes deeper until it eventually reaches the bottom. The size of the fish is always determined by the depth of the arch. The length of the arch is no indicator of size. Wind and current influence boat speed. Go slower if you are traveling with the current and wind, e.g. neutral if need be. Go a little bit faster if traveling into the current and wind. Traditional sonar works better when you are traveling slower. Boat speed is critical. Fish arches are not a reliable indicator of the size of the fish. Use side scan to find fish as it covers a much bigger area than 2D. Once you've found fish, use the 2D sounder to drill down and to see if the spot is worth fishing. The faster the boat, the smaller the fish. Double the speed halves the size of the fish. Search for new structure at six to eight knots. Come back slowly at around two knots if you find something worth fishing. Number two, scroll speed you have set on your unit. A slow scroll speed in a fast moving boat results in only tiny showings on sounder. Run your scroll speed on the fastest setting. A slow scroll speed compresses fish and a fast scroll speed elongates fish. Use the manual scroll speed in the upper and lower ranges. Auto scroll does not take the sounder to the fastest setting. The transducer will give a wavy effect if you're out in rough seas or if there is a decent amount of swell. Number three, scale you are using for a given application. Set the range to scale for the application. When searching or looking for fish, set your scale as wide as your unit will allow. When you're undergoing an assessment, Keep consistent for future applications. The wider the scale, the smaller the object. 50 to 70 feet for inshore, 150 to 200 feet for offshore. Running a split screen with a normal or traditional screen and a bottom zoom provides clarification. Offshore, zoom into the bottom five or 10 meters. To be able to see fish, especially small fish, it is crucial to have a faster scroll speed and a slower boat speed. Keep your units or distances consistent to make comparisons easier over time. There is no substitute for knowing where fish will be, so learn your target species. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Cheers. Bye.